we're going to have a recap from episode 1 and episode 2, I already introduced the concept which is folding architecture or maintaining the continuity of material. They just had to work around it. So that is form based on a concept and now we are moving towards um, form based on parameters and different conditions. So my students have three tasks. One is to create a hypothetical section. Two is to show how they're going to carve the building by using parameters. And then the third is to show an updated section. Hypothetical section is basically for them to propose a program, any activity that they can think of that will influence the form of the building. Let me clarify that we're not very specific with the program yet, so we cannot nitpick on the mistakes and the flaws of their proposal. And then the second one is for them to show how they're going to carve the architectural massing using different parameters. They were given three uh, parameters, sun, wind, and the third is vistas. The fourth one, it's up to them if they want to use another influencer in terms of uh, carving their building form. Then the third, I wanted to demonstrate how much they understand the section uh, and showing the modification of their carving process. More clarification before we go to the individual student work. First, they were given the freedom to choose the location of their project even though they cannot go out. Uh, so it's still a hypothetical site proposal. And second, they were given the freedom to expand it accordingly because remember, there were only three tasks, but the second one is expandable to many uh, slides or many sheets or drawings. Let me also reiterate that we are using general parameters. Sun can be used, especially when it comes to wind analysis. There are so many factors that need to be considered, uh, such as the con contextual massing, the obstructions, and then uh, the unimp unimpeded air, etc. And as for the creative parameter, this is just a testing ground if they can actually proceed to the creative research that involves translating a scientific or empirical research, research into something physical. It's not officially required, but it's a testing ground. So let us start with the student. Uh, for the hypothetical section, we're looking at an art and innovation center. Uh, and I like this uh, presentation because it uses a green palette for a gradient of zoning. And uh, I think she took my advice from a, a work of another student wherein the student created a diagram process presentation uh, that looks like a poster. And I said, I keep telling them that when you are making a presentation, try to look to make it look like a, a poster, an artwork that you can almost frame it. So uh, each work that they submit or each step of the process that they submit can look like something that they can be proud of. When it comes to architectural drawings, I'm very particular with thickness. While this looks really good, it doesn't look realistic architecturally because it doesn't reflect the beams, it doesn't reflect the thickness of the, the slabs, etc. But of course, this is a diagrammatic process, which is understandable at this point. But I want to point out that whenever you are presenting something that is very architectural and something that will communicate the elements of an architecture. The Sunpath Diagram is actually an impressive graphical tool in order for you to orient your site. But in this particular project, although it's a hypothetical site, uh, she's not very particular about the location of the property. And it's just a diagram that is superimposed on an aerial photo of a site and you don't know where the innovation center is going to be located. The sun carving diagram, she started with the top view and then she indicated the area wherein she wanted to carve. Um, wh why this area remains to be explained? Probably by showing this angle, she's saying that the ground level will be exposed to the sun and then the inclined surface of the volume will be protected from it. And it's the same case with the other side of having the same blade uh, carving through the form and then having the same areas protected from the sun. She created that blade to indicate the incline of the carving. Uh, that means that that will be the angle of the sun exposing the ground. But what is not clear is that she ended up with a very straight edge uh, type of volume towards the end. So I'm really confused about this diagram. And if we are going to base the proposal from the hypothetical section, we can read that this is going to be a multi-story building. So it remains a question why the wind is limited to the central part of the building. It's really confusing. Maybe this is the area for a public space 
or a piazza where you can display the sculpture for the center. I, I'm not sure yet. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Maybe she's looking at her original form from last week. We're looking at this uh, unfolded elements from the folding exercise indicating the different areas of her building. But I don't know how relevant the sun carving and the wind carving are for this uh, face. We're looking at the updated section. We're not really seeing where the wind and the sun carved areas are located. I'm trying to find out how the process was used to inform the final hypothetical section. This is a very colorful hypothetical section and just like the previous work it has the component of the art center uh, with the fashion component and some galleries and that's why it makes me curious how she used the sun carving and the wind carving as uh, an information to uh, to carve the form of this building uh, so when we go to the next slide when you see that uh, of course she uh, she used the angle of the sun just like the previous work and then they created the angle of the sun as a blade that carved the form out and then uh, it means that the sun is going to be exposed on the floor of the ground level and um, what probably they are missing out is that the reflection of the sun can also generate heat so it might be very important for them to consider that the heat that generated by the sun can affect the, the temperature of the interiors of the gallery that can affect the, the paintings inside relevant in this regard because galleries are meant to be environmentally controlled in, tem in terms of temperature uh, because you need to protect the, the integrity of the paintings why it's already given that the gallery has to be air-conditioned so the wind diagram is actually irrelevant in this regard and when we're looking at the studio probably it can work as a naturally ventilated space but still when we're looking at the wind diagram and how it influenced the, the form it didn't really uh, affect it so much. That's why when we're looking at the final section or the updated section, we can only see the effect of the sun carving, um, which is actually good, but again, with the problem of uh, the heat generated by the reflection of the sun. This is a very straightforward hypothetical section of a conventional building. You have the typical ground floor area, the commercial area, and then you have the leisure area. When it comes to the sun carving, he used the same method by identifying the sun angle and then uh, locating it on the cube form and then uh, using this angle as a blade to sort of carve the form. He used it several times on the different sides of the cube but of course it lacks the information why and some of the diagram he also intersected the sun blades uh, so they intersected. So this part, I'm not really sure how uh, it is logical. One part of it is actually understandable. You saw the, the process, but the backside is not actually shown. I would encourage the student to complete the information when you are showing a process diagram. And then we move on to the wind diagram wherein he identified two kinds of air. One is a bad air and one is a good air. Uh, good being Amihan and then bad being Habagat. The difficulty about reading this diagram is that you cannot really see the entirety of the form. So you cannot really read if it's going to work or not. Right now we're looking at the zoom in version of the diagram and we're not really sure if this is going to be effective. I actually appreciate the thermal map wherein you can see the warm and the cold areas. And he also showed the velocity of the air and how it behaves with the corresponding model. But basically this is just an analysis. The, the form is already finished. So it doesn't really inform how the, uh, the form was carved based on the thermal map. So the process was reversed. So basically, he used the thermal map as an analysis more than uh, as a tool. He, he, he indicated the particular zone that he wanted to modify and then turn it into a ramp or a stair-like uh, element. But when it comes to diagram number seven, I'm not sure if uh, this modification is all about just the facade. So the information is lacking. How I wish that the other diagrams that he presented prior to this slide has more information. In the same case with this diagram, although beautifully drawn, it's still a zoom-in version of, uh, of uh, the process. And I'm not sure how uh, this is relating to the overall envelope. So basically, he's doing it in a micro manner, wherein uh, he's zooming in to the details. What's nice about this diagram is that you can see the chronological order but it still lacks information that sort of makes me understand what this is all about 
All I know is that this is a zoom in version of the process that I've been talking about. When you're looking at this form, this is already the, the final version. How you wish that uh, it was presented this way? I mean the process was presented in a three-dimensional manner so that uh, it will be like an animation of uh, form finding. Um, it's just that when you are focusing too much on the detail, uh, you, especially if you're not familiar with the project, you easily get lost in a translation and you easily get lost in the storytelling. I actually appreciate the breakdown of areas through this exploded uh, diagram and we can see that he segregated the zones accordingly. And if only the process of the carving was very clear or clearly explained, I would appreciate this section more uh, because clearly you can see the difference between the section now and the hypothetical section. Again, a straightforward section. What's interesting about this hypothetical idea is that he's introducing a bird sanctuary at the topmost floor. Uh, there is some idea in this diagram, which is that it's very hard to read, maybe because of the line type that you use or probably the output of the printout, because I cannot see the broken lines. You really, you really need to look up close in order to see the broken lines uh, that, uh, sh that is uh, um, showing the cube where he's carving this form from. The next slide is actually more clear. You can see planar elements that are exploded and then he combined it towards the end. So he, that created a volume and then a lot of information is indicated in this slide and uh, we can see that the carving uh, based on the sun path is continued uh, to make the form more complicated. That's why I asked them to create sections because this is the only way they can actually use the sun as a carving tool um, in order to manipulate the exposure of the sun in the interiors, even in the exterior, but not really as a, a knife or a blade to carve the form because it doesn't really work that way. Probably the best way I can explain it is through this next diagram because you can see on the second form it has a hole and that could welcome the sunlight. And of course, depending on the times of the day, um, uh, when the sun is at a certain angle, of course it will behave differently in the interiors and you can have a play of light and then probably you can carve the interiors accordingly. As for the additional parameter, we saw in this hypothetical section that he is introducing a bird sanctuary and uh, in this case, this is how it influenced the form. He separated the deck for people and then he separated the deck for uh, for the birds so that uh, you can visually see them but you cannot necessarily touch them. Although these guys were working on a hypothetical site, of course the views would be hypothetical also. But uh, when you use view as a parameter, you need to be very specific on how you're going to reference the view in relation to your model. And in this case, I'm not really seeing how the views is actually used to uh, inform the form. I think this is okay when you're trying to create a more interesting form and you wanted to create ledges. But we cannot really necessarily say that the view is a parameter when you are actually providing ledges all throughout uh, the form because uh, it's not really a parameter, it's basically using the building as a platform. Uh, it's very different when you are creating a hole in order to frame a view or in order to highlight a view. So many softwares or program now that can be used to analyze the wind behavior with the building and this is an example of that. This is what I'm saying when it comes to using sun angle uh, when it comes to the carving of the interior. Uh, we can imagine this as a, an interior space or an atrium where you have cafes at the ground level and at noon time when you have a direct sunlight uh, you can actually create a carve that sort of creates shade on, on the side of the atrium thereby making the space more comfortable but still allowing uh, natural light come into the space. In particular work we can see that the student uh, cited uh, the project in a very remote area in the Philippines and I understand where she's coming from because in telling them that when you're designing something you have to be very specific with the site. For the hypothetical section I appreciate the professional quality in the work. It is something that I would even use in my own office. Um, you can see the maturity in terms of um, material and building technology and this is nothing it can qualify as a section per se but you can see the, the program uh, from the side of the elevation. Judging from what we are looking at, it's located beside the sea and um, there's some uh, fishing component to it. And then we saw the word Bajau, 
Um, I'm not sure if this is the kind of architecture that they'll be comfortable in. Uh, it needs further research. But for me, it's an interesting start. I recognize the advanced level of the student as you can see from the bottom diagrams where she segregated different areas of the program and then uh, she tried to create a form um, that sort of uh, adjusts to the site accordingly at this early stage. But I have to point out that uh, this is just an exercise and this is not an actual architecture project yet. You can see the excitement with the students when they are uh, trying to uh, do it further. And I sort of appreciate that because there's a, a passion in, in what they are doing. Again, another set of uh, beautiful drawings. You can see that uh, she exploded uh, the forms, um, indicating the different programs available in this building. She also proposed, she also proposed classrooms in this building and she situated it in such a way that to maximize uh, natural ventilation uh, for these rooms. And recognizing the context and the culture of the area where she considered the orientation of the Mecca so that uh, uh, the stakeholders will be able to pray. Um, and if you notice, she also segregated the spaces and the rooms according to sex, but still uh, enjoying the same orientation uh, that will enable them to pray. More of an overview of the orientation of the building when it comes to the wind. And then a very simplified diagram showing the views. This is one example, one very good example of how you can create variations out of uh, your presentation. Yes, it's all black and white and some introduce some colors. Uh, and um, in this case, this is a more uh, plain type of presentation where you don't see a lot of colors. Instead, you just have text and uh, line types uh, showing uh, the direction of the views. What I think is lacking in this presentation are the photos of the actual views, uh, which is understandable because you cannot go to the site. When you see uh, views of the site, it's actually better to make your client uh, see what you are seeing uh, through the building. So that way you can easily convince them that this is a viewpoint uh, from your proposal. I appreciate that she's doing advanced research for this very small exercise. And in this case, she's proposing a an Agan Agan Observatory wherein uh, they can also harvest seaweed. And uh, from this diagram, she's already showing some knowledge of the process that we're looking at when it comes to creating a part of the architecture that does something. And in this case, uh, an appendage in the building that sort of harvests uh, seaweed according to the tide of the sea. The origin of the form, how she shape it according to uh, the site according to the building that she's trying to design, how she, she is connecting with the main building, and then how she created those fenestrations uh, so that uh, water could go in uh, depending on the time of the day, depending on the tides. A very professionally done section, their grammatic section, and just by using symbols without using text, you can easily or intuitively uh, read what she's trying to say. Um, but I want to point out something about this exercise. Uh, this exercise is uh, a continuation of our exercise from the beginning wherein we're still talking about continuity of material and in this case everything became just a volume and she lost the idea of a continuity and I think she got too excited with uh, creating an architectural project which is very understandable as I was saying but uh, I want them to know that uh, when it comes to architectural project brief it's very important to follow them especially when you join design competitions. If you're away from the expectations or, or the project brief, you're automatically disqualified, regardless how beautiful your presentation is, regardless how conceptual, conceptually strong your proposal is. So I just want to uh, raise that uh, while all of this effort is very commendable and we know that uh, uh, she is in an advanced level of design, but uh, many situations out there, especially competitions, when you don't know how to follow the design, no matter how good you are, actually be more of a disadvantage more than it can benefit you.